Hello and welcome to the Friday, February 17th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today came across an interesting phishing attempt that used the browser in browser technique. Now, there are a couple different variations of that. Some of the more sophisticated ones will essentially redirect you to a browser based desktop. So you essentially are now accessing a website through a remote browser without necessarily realizing this. What Jan had here was a pretty good emulation of browser windows inside the HTML DOM of uh, your own browser. In this case, the window that you appear to be seeing has everything that you're used to from your browser, including a URL bar, the lock from a TLS and so on to essentially make you believe that you are actually entering your credentials into a different site than you are actually entering them. I think uh, some of uh, these uh, phishing attempts are also taking advantage of uh, the very common behavior of a pop-up login windows like used with OAuth and such that essentially display a fairly small browser window just with the login box. So uh, these uh, fake uh, pop-up windows are looking just the same. And of course, users are likely going to fall for them. Something great to introduce in your awareness uh, training to sort of show something a little bit different, a little bit more sophisticated. And if you're running a Windows Server 2022 inside a virtual machine on VMware ESX I, well, uh, you may run into problems after applying the latest patch from Microsoft. Apparently, uh, Knowledge Base 5022842, which was part of uh, this week's uh, patches, has a problem that prevents uh, Windows Server 2022 from uh, booting if Secure Boot is enabled. So that's a part here that's uh, being uh, broken by the patch and prevents your virtual machine from booting. Apparently only affects virtual machines, not actual physical servers. And maybe operationally less important, but still important to note is that if you're running Windows 11 version 22H2 and you're updating with uh, VUS, uh, then, well, uh, you may not be offered the latest updates right now. This appears to be a particular issue if the Windows Server Update service is running again on Windows Server 2022 and if that server has been upgraded from server 2016 or 2019. And Malwarebytes writes that the ESX IARCS ransomware is evolving. Remember how Sysac came up with a recovery script? Well, the recovery script in part worked because the encryption routine that only encrypt small parts of the system. The updated uh, version of uh, the ESXi ARCs malware is now encrypting more of the files, which makes recovery, of course, more difficult. On the other hand, given that uh, pretty much all the vulnerable systems have already been affected by this malware, I doubt that this additional uh, variation is really making a big difference at this point. Then we got a couple of vulnerabilities to talk about. First of all, an unauthenticated denial of service vulnerability in PHP. Nothing really all that uh, critical. Well, after all, it's just a denial of service vulnerability affecting PHP 8 in particular if you're allowing file uploads. And likely more important is a vulnerability in Clam AV, the open source anti-virus engine. Clam AV 101 fixes uh, two vulnerabilities. The critical one here does allow remote code execution. It's a vulnerability in the HFS plus file parser. 
You may say, hey, I don't use uh, HFS plus files may not matter here in order to be exploitable because, well, uh, these files, of course, may be parsed by Clam AV either way. So the code may still execute even if in your environment you will not use uh, this file type. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And as always, please recommend this podcast and have a good weekend and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.